Hey, beautiful soul. Welcome to the Created Free Podcast. I am your proud host, August Crenshaw, aka Mrs. Raw, Real, and Relentless. And you're here because the words created free sound good, but you're working on making it more of a reality in your life. So stick around as we discuss and challenge all that we know and feel about relationships, religion, business, spirituality, emotions, and so much more. Whatever life is throwing at us, okay? It's a topic of discussion. And then watch me show how this is impacting the way that you're showing up as an entrepreneur. So we're going to be challenging authenticity and we're going to get to the root of who we really are and what we desire and make sure we're doing everything that we can to manifest a life that we love. All right, so let's get into it. What's up, y'all? Oh, shit. Can we get a little bit messy in this bitch? Have you guys missed me? I've missed you too. Um, The title of the podcast probably should have made your eyebrow go, hmm, unashamed till now. Well, we're going to talk about some things and we're going to talk about some people, really a person. I had to think about this for a second because, you know, one of the things that I don't do is I don't get messy with people and I don't sling mud. I remember my grandmother telling me a long time ago, you know, from a distance, when you arguing with the fool, no one knows which one is the fool. So anywho, created free. I remember when I thought about doing this podcast and honestly, I was going to cancel this podcast because the individual that is singing the intro um, that is no longer attached to this podcast. I was like, I don't want anything done that's in association with her, but. I don't podcast for her. I podcast for you guys. And so let's talk about what being created, create, being created free actually means, you know, and I need to, I need to, I need to thank this person for causing me to walk in this world with all of my audacity and my authenticity and to overcome anything at her hands. But anywho, let me let me let me get focused and, and bring this all the way um all the way around and tie in a big old circle and tie a pretty ass bow on this bitch. So the bottom line is is that my vagina popped out a narcissist. Yep, I said it. And trust me, I'm not about to lose focus because, you know, I share a lot of different things on the podcast. And first I was like, I'm not saying anything about this because, you know, it's it's not on brand. I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about, you know, what she did because I'm just not going to give her that amount of free press. And she gets she get a little bit. She get a little bit of free press. And other than that, um, she isn't worth it. But, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. First of all. I've done a lot of things in my lifetime. I'm almost 50 years old. So between abortions and trying drugs and sleeping with guys and, you know, having all kinds of shit happen. Been there, did that, done that. And for those of you that have been around me for years, don't know me before I was even a coach. I've always been very vulnerable and transparent. Now, of course, I don't tell everybody everything. But I've never done anything that I'm ashamed of. A lot of you know that I didn't go to my grandmother's funeral and my grandmother raised me. If you want context to that story, you'll get it at another time. But the point is, I didn't do it because I didn't want to. And I have a very firm reason in my spirit as to why I didn't go. The bottom line is, is that when I make decisions, I make decisions that I can be proud of. And I make decisions that I don't have to go back on. And so shame is not something that I feel. But my oldest daughter tried to make me feel ashamed. A lot of stuff happened over, when when did she come back around? She came back around, around July of last year. And a lot has happened. There was a lot going on. My marriage was coming to a head as far as all of the, the drama and the crazy shit. But she was trying to rekindle the relationship, came back into my life, apologizing, saying that she knew she was an ineffective communicator and she knew she did all of these things wrong. And like an idiot, I let her back in my life. And my husband was so hostile and antagonistic. He was like, nothing about KK's changed. She's still just this manipulative person. Now, because of the way he packaged 
what he said about her, I couldn't receive it. We were already having our own issues. He didn't sit me down and say, hey, August, look, I know you love your daughter, but X, Y, and Z, and this is some stuff, and I need you to be precautious. And so she became another point of contention in my relationship that was already going downhill drastically. And this is a man that I've been with for almost 20 years. And we've had from 2006 to 2018, 12 years of damn near marital bliss. But from 2018 to now, it's been up and down and down and down and up a little bit more and up and down and up, up, up and down, down, down. You already know for those of you that have been around. But things came to a point where it got out of control between he and I. But things also got out of control with my daughter and I. And I'm not I'm not going to waste my time giving you guys all of the details, but what I will tell you this is that when she began to talk about my relationship and she began to talk about how she felt about things that was going on, we had this conversation and she was like, I didn't know how to support you. One day you're saying you're staying with him. The next minute you say you're leaving. One second you're saying, will, you, maybe will we take you in? Or maybe you're going to live in a hotel. You're going to leave in Houston, blah, 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 blah. And I just, I told her, I said, wow, well, okay, okay. I said, I told you that while you were talking to me, that I may go back and forth in my mind. I said, because I left the, my first husband and he was abusive and he had nothing good, you know. But when you let go of a marriage, it's not as simple as just letting go. But when we talk about my relationship with my husband, there is a lot, a lot there. And we have two beautiful children that we chose, that we chose to have together. And so. I realized that she just was immature and incapable of supporting me. She didn't like the fact that I said that, but it was the truth. And she's like, yeah, you know, I've just done all of these things for you. And then this is, this is what made our relationship shift. For your birthday, I went into debt. I bought you this and I did that. And I painted you a picture. And remember that journal I wrote you every day? I was just filling up these pages of these journals with all this stuff for you. And then I was researching tenor saxophones. And I bought you these cranberry bliss bars. Matter of fact, I got you too. And she was like, damn. What the fuck did you do all of that shit for me for? And I basically told her, I said, oh, I get it. Because my marriage had been on the rocks and you know how important birthdays are to me. You wanted to throw it up in my face that you did more for me than you think my husband did for me. But there's some things that she doesn't know that he did because they were none of her fucking business. But I realized something about her that I was like, damn. So you you had an ulterior motive with everything you did. And so I know there's a bunch of holes in this story because... Bottom line is, is I'm not attempting to embarrass her. And you're going to understand why this is called unashamed till now. Well, bottom line is, is we ended up having our final discussion and I had told her, I was like, you know, I, you're, you're not a priority right now. Um, I have to deal with some things with my children, deal with the circumstances of what happened between Larry and I and the babies. And me exercising self-care with myself, having my financial stability, because we're separated at this moment. Um, that's, what's, that's what's important to me. You're at the bottom of the totem pole. And considering the fact that you said some of the things you said to me, um, I, I, don't, I don't need to talk to you. The first time we had a three-year split and we weren't speaking to each other, I wasn't the one who ended that. This time around, I have a clear conscience and I know that I'm the one that's saying I can't do this. I can't do this relationship anymore. And rather than take that, even though it may have hurt with maturity, I get notifications from other people that she on social media spilling all kinds of tea. She's about to write a book about <laughs> how she's the firstborn and how there needs to be some research done or work done on about how the firstborn is the victim of trauma because they're the experimental child. And I remember the person that told me that she did it. She was like, I was thinking to myself, like she's so fucking stupid and she has no kids because every fucking child is an experiment because they don't come with a manual. And we, you know, laughed at that or whatever. 
But then she's going on to talk about things that happened in my household, um, how I parented or not parented my kids in her opinion and talking about, you know, everything that built us. She's, she's telling my business to justify her emotions and doing the exact thing that I said to her when she came back into my life that I didn't trust her because she used to smear my name when she would talk to people about me and say things that she had no business saying oh my god because she's got this really sweet voice I even asked my friend Anissa have I ever disrespected you or talked bad about you to anybody and it's like yeah I hope you look back at this shit nigga because now you're doing it for all of social media land, even though you're not even a motherfucking dot, you're not even a speck in social media with all of the billions of people there, but it's just the point that you're doing it. And so I'm not ashamed of anything that I've done, but I'm actually ashamed that I gave birth to this child. I am very fucking ashamed that I gave birth to this child because, you know, I made the comment to another person I was speaking to. And y'all, this is all going, like I said, it's going to come back around full circle and put a bow on it. I said, you know, a lot of people talk about having enemies. This is before she even did this shit. I said, most people don't have enemies. You just have haters. You know, you got people that don't necessarily really like you. An enemy is someone who is preoccupied with you and your demise. And that is what she is at this point in time. And it's sad, right? It's sad because <laughs> she has more energy towards trying to put me down wanting to write a book so she can not do her own healing write a book first of all nobody wants to write a book about your shit <laughs> you have to write a book where people are getting value from it <laughs> I guess since she worked with me for 90 days she figured that she learned enough about marketing to get out of here and become an Amazon bestseller <laughs> I got women that have worked with me for years that have had different milestones in their business. And since she was privy to my genius for 90 days, I guess she thinks she's going to do something. Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw shade on this part. This nigga ain't never committed to shit. She got a voice like a fucking bird. She can't even fucking commit to actually expanding her music career. Good luck with, you know, the book. <laughs> anywho, there's no, she's not going to complete shit. She can't even work a fucking job. You got you. Anywho. Yeah, I went there just a little bit. I had to throw a little bit of shade. Sorry, y'all. But anywho, yeah, I say all of this just to say that I've never been ashamed of anything in my life. And I'm not going to, aside from the fact that I gave birth to her. A lot of you, you know why you don't show up? You want to know why you don't show up as powerfully as you can on social media? Because you are worried about the Kamarias in your life. You are worried about the people who know things about you and the things that you've done and what they will say about you. I remember years ago doing some modeling with some dude because, yeah, you know, I it disillusioned myself that I was, you know, modeling for big girls. And I remember he took my pictures and he, he was asking me what I like, take pictures in my panties and stuff. And I ended up killing the modeling session and went back home. And I was in South Carolina. I was like, no, motherfucker, take me to the airport. Uh, the guy I'm engaged to knows where I'm at. He's from here. He will find you. Bet not nothing happened to me. And he took the pictures that he had of me, but on the side of my website that he made, and I didn't know anything about the power of social media, the power of the Internet, the power of my name. But he put per not, per, uh, pornographic sites of other women he took pictures to as the ads on that website. And I remember when I wanted to come out here and speak about being bold and your message and all of that stuff. I was like, Dad, people going to be like, is that her? Is that that August? Oh, my God. And that I would get the wrong kind of attention. And while I'm talking about being bold and powerful and strong and authentic, I remember that bothered me. Some of you, you have spouses, you have siblings, your parents, shit, your children. You are worried about them spilling the tea on you. At some point, you have to realize that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the people that you're created to serve, if you're walking in integrity and you're just a person who's lived life, don't nobody care about that shit. 
My daughter is so fucking stupid that she, yeah, I said it that way. I'm not going to clean that shit up. You can call me whatever the fuck you want to. She is so, and, and let me stop saying that because I, she, she's not my daughter. When you disrespect your parent to this degree, you know how we call niggas sperm donors. I'm her egg donor because you have went out of your way to do the opposite of your so-called Christian upbringing. You're not honoring your mother and father. This is something that could have been kept, you know, to yourself. All of this shit that she's doing, anybody, I've impacted the lives of so many people by being vulnerable and sharing my mistakes. And because other people around me have lived long enough, we already know that even if I did fuck up and did something that was outrageously stupid, we understand what it means to be human. The older and older you get, the less you release judgment and the more compassion you show. She doesn't even know what the fuck I'm going through right now. Or maybe she does because she, uh, as she wrote in the journal that she gave me, she knows how her mother is resilient and can get through anything unscathed. Yeah, she already knows that, you know, after the smoke cleared and the dust settled, that this motherfucker right here, I don't play. That I bounced right back. And everything is peachy keen. I'm doing what I'm doing with my children. I'm still running up my bag. Everything is looking beautiful. I'm still getting blessed. All kind of great things are coming my way. I'm still taking care of my body, my mind, and my spirit. But she has other preoccupations as far as wanting to release her pain and her anger by lashing out at me. Most of you, you have a lot of you that I've worked with, you've dealt with being like abused, abused, like from molestation. You know, I've worked with some women that got a lot, a lot of sexual trauma more often than not, where you've dealt with some shit and we've had to work through how you still have to be a champion for the people and you still have to show up. You've got to tell your story. And I have helped women who are, you know, because my daughter claims I'm just this awful mother. Yeah, okay. Well, I know women who have went through what, I mean, there's some people that have been abused that would look at her and slap her and say, bitch, shut the fuck up. You weren't abused. You just had a concerned ass motherfucking mama who had your goddamn back. And if they knew, and if they know the context of some of the shit she did to me, they would be like, no, if anything, your crazy ass been abusing your mama since you was little. That's why you ain't got no good stories to tell about your childhood because you've been fucking up since birth. She really has been a thorn in my side. No, this is not shade. She's been a thorn in my fucking side since she was born. The kind of things that she's done with her graduation, with her wedding, with all kinds of shit. My my daughter has shown narcissistic, narcissistic tendencies for God knows how long. But she ain't dealt with no, no abuse. She's dealt with discomfort. She's dealt with the person that had to learn how to deal with parenting. But you guys, you've dealt with hardcore abuse. And I've looked, I've listened to women like you come and say, August, I need how to, I need to know how to position my story because your mothers, th these are my clients. It is you, your mothers have known that their husbands or boyfriends have been sneaking in your room from the ages of three and 17, or, you know, raping you since, you know, you were 10 years old. And you knew that they knew because maybe they walked in the room one day with his underwear on or, and they, and they chose not to believe you even when you told them. And here it is. You want to tell your story and still keep your, your, your mother's reputation in, intact, but tell the truth. And this child has decided that she just want to go out and, and think that she airing all my dirty aunt laundry. <laughs> I want to tell her so bad. But I don't want to say shit to it. Like, bitch, you can't earn my dirty laundry better than me. And so what's going to happen with some of you all is you're going to realize that no matter how you spin it, coming out here and becoming a business owner is also going to reveal who you can and you can't be connected to. Like, I, I could have hurt my daughter. I didn't. I could have really hurt her for the simple fact that when everything hit the fan, and I could have kept that journal that she wrote for proof to say, like, here's the journal of the bitch that wrote the book. But she ain't she ain't famous enough. It don't matter. Like she wrote all these pages of look at how you were there for me, mom, blah, 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 blah. But I took that journal. I took them fucking clothes. I took that fucking painting. You know, I have to detox and declutter, spiritually recalibrate my home. If it was anything associated with that nigga, I had to throw that shit in the fucking trash. 
throw it in the trash. Now my anger and my rage wanted to take the shit, cut it up, damage it, and put it on her front porch. But I have to realize that that kind of energy coming from me would be me being like her. So I just very subtly threw everything away. I don't need shit you bought me. I go buy all my own shit. So yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you got to get out here and you got to still promote your business. You got to walk in the newness of you. When you decide to become an entrepreneur, something has shifted in you. You want to be bold. You want to take charge of your life. You, you have a new frame of thinking. You've stepped into the realm of personal development. You want to slay all of your demons. And then you have the memories of all of the stuff that you've done. And because you're human, you're going to still fuck up along the way. And you can't allow those fuck ups and those things that are happening in your life. Because you will feel like I can't go out there and promote because I'm angry and I talk about empowerment. I'm a marriage coach, but, you know, my marriage is on the rocks. I'm a financial coach, but, you know, such and such is going to, you know, tell the say that, you know, my emergency fund had got exhausted and I had to borrow some money. Like there are going to be things that are going to happen that are contrary to what you want to accomplish. It'll be your biggest struggle. It'll be your most difficult challenge. And you still got to stand on the principles that you're selling the fact that a new way is the best way. And you still got to show the fuck up. So, yeah, if you know who she is and she follows you follow her, you got to spin on my life. Of course, she's painted that spin very beautifully so that every decision that she made looks so fucking peachy king. <laughs> But whatever, do whatever you got to do for you, boo. I love y'all. You got to still be bold. You got to still be out here. You're created free. You are even free from your, your past decisions and any decisions that you go for, make going forward that aren't necessarily of the greatest. As long as there was not malicious intent. As long as... You have done everything in your power to be the greatest version of yourself. Now, when you got malicious intent and you do other shit and you just a no good mofo. Then, yeah. You, you're going to have to watch out for that shit. I just laughed because she thought she had a revelation to be a marriage coach. But when I listened to the way that she judged me and my marriage, now you see why you can't get no clients. Even though she she had one person in her 90 days reach out to her. And it's like, yeah, you too judgmental to be anybody's coach. I wouldn't coach you. Because people are going to come to you needing help. And you're going to judge her from your little bitty young 28, ain't been through enough shit, naive ass eyes. You're going to be coaching people that are married and have children. You don't even understand what it means to be a mother and to look at something that you created and love it and hate it simultaneously. Yeah, because parents get fucking tired. And I've been a fucking mother for 40 years and I'm only 47. So you, that tells you a lot. Sometimes I get tired of parenting. But anywho, I'm going down another leaf. I mean, going down another lane. So, yeah, I was going to discontinue the podcast, but that's some bullshit. I just had to sit in like, what the fuck am I going to do? I was like, shit, she was singing the intro on all of the old episodes. And I said, I'm not even going to delete the old episodes because they were great. Her voice is there. That is what it is. Let that stay out there in social media land. But going forward, we'll just not have all of that, that dumb shit. I don't want no parts of her on my podcast. I think it's funny, though, because her husband is, um, he made the beat for the outro but yeah i don't i don't got beef with him i don't but anywho you all enjoy yourselves be authentic with your story and show the fuck up whining yes thank you for tuning in to the created free podcast but it ain't over yet baby don't forget to head over to augustcrenshaw.com forward slash gift 
and get your free case study. I'm hoping that you are realizing more and more how everything is connected and this is impacting how your marketing muscle looks in your business, especially as it pertains to copy, video, and then also your sales muscle. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a five-star review. Share this episode with someone you know that needs it and just stay tuned and we'll be back to discuss another topic next week or whenever the hell I feel like it. All right, you all have a beautiful day. Deuces.